Hi, it's Father Justin here, and I'm live with uh, Taylor Langson, um, one of the members of your illustrious Youth Commission. Uh, Taylor is a senior at New Canaan High School. Um, she uh, wishes when she uh, grows up, she wants to be a self-proclaimed professional hippie, aka an environmental scientist, which I think is just awesome. I've always wanted to be a professional hippie, but I don't think that many hippies have comb overs, so I just didn't think I could pull it off, but Taylor definitely can. Uh, and she's also in um, her, her major claim to fame right now on the mean streets of New Canaan is she's in a rock band called the Outliers. She's on vocals. She's uh, on the bass guitar and the guitar. She is awesome. She is really, really awesome. We're uh, really delighted that she's on the Youth Commission and glad that she's agreed uh, to have a word here with you all, the youth of the parish, about Advent and Christmas. Hi, Taylor. Thanks so much for being with us. Hi, thank you, Father Justin. <laughs> Uh, so I've got the same two questions for all of the Youth Commission folks. And the first one is, what do you think the first Christmas was like? What do you think it was like for Mary and Joseph and a little baby Jesus in this barn in the middle of nowhere in Palestine in a cave? Uh, I mean, what, what do you think it was like? Um, personally, I think it was incredibly chaotic and stressful because you've got this family of two and they're wandering around and just having a baby in like a stable in like a barn that's just first of all that sounds incredibly painful but I'm personally I'm happy I wasn't there because it's such it's hard to imagine we picture Christmas as like, you know, gifts and family and turkey and stuff, but there was a lot of suffering and stress that went into, you know, the birth of baby Jesus and, you know, everyone that surrounded him, you know, mostly being animals and his mom. <laughs> but I think there's kind of two sides because you've got right there in the action of the birth of Jesus Christ. And then you've got the, um, the three people that come and bring gifts. What are their names? Magi. Magi or <laughs> the Magi. So they actually see this star in the middle of the night. So I thought that was very calming. That is what I see when I see Christmas. But when you really read the story and look back, it's not just this like pretty star in the sky. It's scary. So I don't know. Um, I think it's very different from how we perceive Christmas now. That's really, really that's very beautiful and powerful, Taylor. I mean, um, I love your, I love your, like your two sides of the Christmas story thing. It was true even then, even in the first century. You know, you have the the relative stress of the actual event for like Mary and Joseph. Probably not that stressful for the animals, but uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe they're like, who, who are these people? Why are they in our home? Um, but then the the calm and the hope of it for the Magi who see the star and who journey mm -hmm. to see this newborn king. Um, this uh, this um, messianic figure uh, who is a source of great hope for them, hope political and personal and spiritual and everything in between. Mm -hmm. um, what, like, given that you have this event, that you have this Christmas event that the season of Advent is looking towards and which the 12 days of Christmas commemorate and the event itself historically, as you say, was probably pretty stressful, and yet it also brought people hope. I wonder, what do you think this Christmas is going to be like for you? Um, this Christmas here, in the midst of the stress of a pandemic, the end of a crazy semester, uh, what's this Christmas going to be like for you, and where are you finding joy in the midst of it? Where does that star, you know, which gave the Magi hope, where do you see the star with hope and peace uh, coming into your life? Um, I definitely have to say the pandemic has been both a blessing and a curse for, you know, my family and I, because I don't know, when it first started, we used to have like family nights, which actually went on for a couple months. And so every night, one of us would decide what we wanted to do, whether that was karaoke or having a stale marshmallow fight. Um, it's just the little things, you know, although we're cut off from our teachers and our friends and um, a lot of people in our life, um, some of the most meaningful relationships I had was right here with me. And I always took that for granted. I never really realized that. So now, I mean, in terms of joy during the holiday season, I'm, I'm finding joy in quarantining so that I can see my family, like my grandmother that I haven't seen in eight months, you know? There's little things that I get like 
I love this website. It's called thriftbooks.com and I get a bunch of random poetry books like obscure and I just order them and I read them because I don't know um finding joy in the small stuff like finding a new series on Netflix or <sighs> cuddling with Layla my dog um is kind of it helps remind me you know what it's all about it's not about going out with friends all the time um but more like being lucky to be around the people we love um and recognizing that it's really helped me to find the small little pieces of joy in my life and really focus on them and realize, wow, <laughs> I'm really lucky. Um, so that's kind of what the pandemic has done for me. And um, that's where I'm finding joy in the very, very small things. I think that's just so incredibly awesome, Taylor. I mean, <laughs> um, it was incredibly awesome because I think that a lot of times we think there has to be some kind of literally an astronomical um or astrological miracle that happens, like, you know, this miraculous star or whatever. Uh, <laughs> there has to be some kind of massive, big miracle in order for us to find hope or joy. And what you're saying actually is that you find, you're finding joy in smaller things, in daily routines, in the people who you're closest to, in your family, in your dog. Uh, and how, how, how old is Layla at this point? Layla is just over a year old. Oh. A menace, but... <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, have any Christmas blessings to you and to your family and to Layla. Uh, prayers that, you know, um, uh, she might be one of the calmer uh, animals in Jesus's, um, in, by Jesus's manger this Christmas, uh, instead of one of the rowdy ones. I have to, I mean, I have to imagine, gosh, were they all the animals well behaved while Mary was trying to give birth? I, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like animals have a good sense of who are really important and good people. So huh. I feel like they might have been trying to take care of her. Maybe she's, I don't know. I believe in animals. <laughs> That's actually really beautiful. Who needs nurses? Uh, <laughs> that's awesome when you when you've got when you've got the 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 stable folks, uh, the the animals in the stable. That's really awesome. Um, yeah. in any case. Merry Christmas. Uh, blessings to all of you who are um, who are uh, watching this wherever and whenever you are. And I thought that we might um, we might close with a prayer here for the first week in Advent. So let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, to be born of a virgin in a stable next to animals and in hay, that in the last day, when Jesus shall come again in his glorious majesty, we may rise to life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taylor, thanks so much for being with us. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much. Bye. Merry Christmas. <laughs>